Hey everyone, Sean Clement here for Wisdom in Golf at the Royal Quebec Golf Club in beautiful Quebec City. Hey to everyone back in Richmond Hill, you know, Paul and Donna and Eric and Rob, and uh, we'll talk to you this week. Um, today we're talking mental game. All right, so we have a lot of single digit handicappers here at the Royal Quebec Golf Club. And everyone, without exception, wants to learn and, and needs to, they want to strive to get better. And at that stage, when you're a three handicap, we're, we're dealing with quarter strokes here and little eighth of a stroke there. And it's a new learning pattern or a, a slightly different change in your pattern that's gonna make a big difference on the golf course. And the difference is, like so many of them, they say, okay, I have one in particular who has a really nice golf swing. Like he's a single digit handicapper when it comes to the swing, but he says, I just can't get past the 84 ceiling. I said, all right, what's your focus when you're playing? He says, well, I, I aim for the center of the fairway and I hit the ball. He, <laughs> you see the pattern, right? So number one, you need a flight plan without the flight plan then you can't set up. And it really is that simple, right? You gotta pick where you want the ball to start, where you want the ball to end. There is no such thing as a straight shot. You have to stop thinking two-dimensionally. You have to start thinking three-dimensionally. The ball's gonna start there, it's gonna rise up to there, and it's gonna fall there. So, if I'm hitting, let's say, a little fade here, I'm gonna start at a little left of that red post, and fade it back toward the blue post. So I've got an intermediate point right here that's gonna lead me to the left side of that red post. Now I have something to set me up. So now I say, okay, there's the ball position that's gonna help me get to the left of that red post. I can't get to the left of the red post from here. If you look at, I'm, I'm gonna put a little uh, link in the description um, of a story of, of um, Seve's old caddy and talking about one of the greatest shots he's ever seen Seve hit. And it's amazing how you see Tiger doing the same thing. You know, he'll hit one wayward into the woods and then you, you come into the woods and you step in the same foot position that he was in and you look up and you'll see nothing. And yet he'll put it out in the, in the, in the front of the green and get up and down for his par. So, when somebody's faced with a situation like that and there's just a little opening, all of a sudden that little opening makes their setup. They go, okay, no, that doesn't fit the opening. No, that doesn't. There, yeah, that'll fit the opening. That, I, could, I could fit it right in there. So you notice how they use that little, that little you know, small margin of error to tighten up their 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 focus and to tighten up their setup. Same thing here, use that intermediate point to tighten you up. You don't want an intermediate point more than this far in front of the ball because our side vision is so distorted. So this is true vision. This one here is an absolute mirage. You can't trust it. Don't try to confirm your alignment with it. You'll feel really weird at first when you're trying to, you know, you're saying, okay, I gotta stay with that but it feels wrong. It's not. Use that because from over here, when you're standing down the fairway, your eyes are binocular. They're at the front of your face. There's a reason for that. If, if where our side vision was really good, we'd have the eyes on the sides of our heads like birds and fish. Those are the prey, okay? So we're going that way through there. That ball position now fits. The club face fits. I can't go in that direction with this club face. It's going to go too far left. But this club face will allow me in dynamic motion. I'm picturing myself releasing in that direction and I feel that dynamically I won't, I won't feel the need to manipulate my club face during my swing if I go in that direction. So I got ball position, I got club face. Well, posture. Well, if I go from here, I'll miss. If I go from here, I'll top. If I go from here, I'm pretty good. And finally, the distance to ball. I can't go there from here. I can't go there from here, but I can go there from here. Now, we've got the setup matched to the picture. What 
seal do you want to use to deliver? And there's where that 84 shooter is going to get big dividends when he starts to, or she starts to, focus on the feel of delivery. Because, you know, your premotor cortex up here is getting ready to fire into your central nervous system to help you perform a specific task. What do you want that task to be? Well, many of you are saying, well, I tend to be really quick under the gun. Well, what's your focus? Well, I got to hurry up and hit that ball before something bad happens. You know what that feels like, don't you? So I'm going to deliver in that direction using the weight of my instrument. What the heck does that mean? Well, if I had a machete and I wanted to slash through a bamboo shoot or a sugar cane, and that was my job for eight hours a day, you think I'd be doing something like this? I'd, I'd, have, I'd need somebody, some professional help, wouldn't I? <laughs> so I'm going to use the weight of my machete to slash through that bamboo shoot. See how there's this beautiful pause at the top. I'm not trying to create the pause. It's creating itself because I'm choosing not to fight with my instrument. So I'm using the weight of the instrument to deliver into that picture. So I'm going to gather the weight of the instrument and use the weight of the instrument to deliver into that picture. So now I have a specific feel that's going to help me deliver into that picture. So many of you are looking down at that ball and you're thinking, yeah, I know I need to go over there, but I'm so worried about ball contact. And so now you've got a conundrum because if you're worried about ball contact, that's your target. If that's your target, you can't go over there. And it's that over there that pays the big bucks. All right. That's what the pros are looking for. So if I had a stone to skip on water here, see where nobody messes this up. Even if you do it underhand, notice where I'm finishing. I'm facing the target. I release the stone here. My weight's on my front foot. That's pure self-preservation 101. Your shoulders only have 20 degrees of range. If I don't move out of the way, I'm going to hit myself. So the brain says, well, I, you want to go over there? I need to go get the ground. Use the ground to get you out of the way so you have access to your target. Well, if that's your target, nice shot. Well, no, I didn't like that shot. I topped it and I got a chicken wing. I don't, don't have a weight shift. Please help me, pro. So, so the pro is going to say, well, we need to work on this chicken wing. We need to work on your weight shift. We need to work on all that stuff. And you're thinking, oh my God, this is a mountain of stuff to do. I'm, I'm just going to give up on golf. It's way too hard. Well, if you go that way, if I take my club here, let's say, if you look at my video entitled Throwing the Club, Sean Clement. So I'm going to throw my club that way. Wow, look at that. Nice weight shift, beautiful balance, beautiful extension. How does that happen? Well, the brain's got to go get the ground, use the ground to get my body out of the way. Look at that leg. So I have access to the target over there. That's the real target. So then I go, okay, if I go, if I throw from here, I miss. If I throw, throw from there, I top. And if I throw from here, well, that feels pretty good. So I'm going left of the post. If I throw left of the post, everything's in order. Well, what's it feel like when I throw left of the post with ease? Well, I gather that sucker and I throw left of the post. And flush and nice height and nice weight shift. And I just landed 10 feet right of the pin. That fit. So you have a flight plan. You have a setup that matches the flight plan. Going to do draw this time. Ball back center. Yep, if I throw to the right of that intermediate point, it feels like the ball is going to fly the way I want to. Well, what's it feel like when I throw in that direction? Oh, yeah, it feels about like... Ah. So that started to the right. And it's trying to work its way back. Stay 25 feet, 30 feet right of the pin. So I'm going to take my two putts and run. And both, in both those instances, I'm staying with my target. So if I stay with my target, 
That's the worst that's going to happen. And you notice, I fell back. The brain can't repeat. So if I try that next draw again, you know, a lot of you are going to say, well, you, you, you lift it up or you pulled back or you did this or you did that. I'm just staying with my target. So if I stay with my target again, there's, I can see it in my mind. I'm going right edge of that intermediate point with a nice throw. What's it feel like when I throw? Oh yeah, nice gather, throw. So my balance was different. I caught that a little thin, but that's all over the flag stick. I, I got birdie opportunity on that one right there. Hogan said he hit six shots to his personal satisfaction in a round of golf. Six out of 36, 18% satisfaction. And you're telling me you want to be perfect on every shot. Are you kidding me? So we have a flight plan. You must have a flight plan. You got to tell your brain what you want so it can figure out how to get it for you. And then you keep telling it what you want and you keep delivering to the, to the picture with the feel that you want to use. And you'll little by little evolve and improve. Everybody's looking for that fast, quick fix right now. Please give it to me. It doesn't exist. You and I go into the bush with an ax for the first time. And you're going to say, okay, Joe over there is looking pretty good. Nah, I think I'm going to do it like this. Oh, look at that. No, nah, I didn't expect that. That's pretty hard wood or that's pretty soft wood, whatever it is. And then you keep going at it. After a couple of days, you're sore. You want to give up. You're thinking this is way too hard. You keep going. And all of a sudden the brain finds that efficiency. And then a week later you're going, I'm, I'm feeling okay now. Two weeks later, eh, I'm feeling pretty good about this. A month later, you're Paul Bunyan or Paulette Bunyan. Okay. I'm going that way. I'm going to do a little fade. There it is. Left of red back to blue. Gather. Throw into left of red. Oh man, that was just money. So there's my first satisfactory shot. Get in. And I pasted that. So the brain says, hey, that's what we want. Cool. Can I repeat that every time the same way? No. So I'm going to savor that one. Thank you very much. And I'm going to go, okay, this is really cool. And all of a sudden you start feeling that and you start getting in that groove and you'll naturally get into your own zone. You, this is the way to the zone, by the way. And then all of a sudden you wake up and you go, woo, best score of my life, right? That's what I'm looking for for you guys. So this is how we get there. It starts with exactly that routine that I just showed you. And then we, you know, throughout our videos and throughout our one-on-ones, if you guys, you know, you need some one-on-one -on -one with me, well, I have online lessons. And what I'm looking for is, well, you, when you send me a video, you say, Sean, this is the target I have. There's my intermediate point. So I see the intermediate point. And then I see your body language when you're going that way. And I can figure out what are the short circuits that are preventing you from getting into that target. And there's the key. How do we remove? We're like sculptors. We remove what doesn't fit and we keep what fits because you already have the machine to do the work. You're not defective. So let's keep rocking. We'll see you soon.